Okay, this video is primarily for the best stooge. I'm trying to um, give him a little help in understanding one of the processes in simplified 3D and 3D printing. Okay, a 3D printer is absolutely positively 100% dumb, deaf, and blind. Okay, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I want you to put down on a piece of paper, stooge. Okay, but here's the trick. I'm going to remove your sense of touch. So you can't tell whether there's a pen in your hand or not. Your hearing is gone, your vision is gone, and even your body's musculature feedback is gone. We actually have a sixth sense where you could put a, your a hand out in the air somewhere with your eyes closed and you can visualize in your mind exactly where that piece of your body is it's 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 awareness of your body position you don't have that either you're dumb deaf and blind in every way possible but if I give you a coordinate and a set of instructions based on coordinate and speed you can follow those instructions with extraordinary precision so we have a print bed Okay, this is zero zero, and on this particular printer, it is um, um, two twenty and two seventy. Okay, forget about vertical height for now. Okay, so your arm is here. Now write down stooge. Okay, you can't see, you can't feel, you can't touch. You have no body position feedback, nothing. Well, the first thing you need to do is create relative coordinate system. So you have to home. You go down, limit switch, over, limit switch, over, limit switch. Okay, now the printer is at zero, zero. Now I can say um, Y100, X10, begin writing, meaning extrude filament. Okay, and now while extruding filament, go X200. Stop. Stop extruding filament. Move to uh, Y105X15, which is going to put you right here. Okay, now begin the following coordinate curvature movement system, and I feed you numbers that make your hand do this. Okay, you just drew an S without having any idea what an S was, without having any feedback whatsoever. So let's try this again. Go to zero, zero. Home switch, home switch, home switch. Now, move up on Y, X. Move across on X, X. Now, someone comes in here and they grab your filament. Now, extrude filament and move right 100 points. Okay, nothing happens because I took your pen. But you can't feel, you can't see, you can't hear. So you have no idea I took your pen. Okay? The printer is absolutely stupid. It prints completely in the dark. It is simply following instructions. Move this motor this much. Move that motor that much. Move this motor that much, which just happens to extrude this. Make this temperature this much. Move this motor this much. Move these motors that much. That's all it can do. If you look at G-code, that's what it is. Okay, that's all G-code is. Your printer is completely, totally dumb, deaf, and blind. It has no feedback. Okay, there's nothing there for the printer to receive feedback from or to process that feedback. So, let's say I have the bed zeroed out. There's the last print I did. Now I want to print one of these. I tell it to go ahead and print. What's going to happen? I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. It's going to go home, home, oops. <laughs> okay, dumb, deaf, and blind. It has no idea that this is here. It can't know it's here. Now, as much as it can't know it's here, it also can't know that this is this wide, that this is this deep that this is this tall. It can't know that. It's dumb, deaf, and blind. It has no idea what the architecture is. It just knows this many steps here, this many steps here, this many steps here. 
it's my job it, it can't even tell it can't go past 220 if I tell it to go X 300 it'll try to do it and it'll go up against this and you'll hear your motor go da -da 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 as it's trying to go to X 300 but it can't because it's hit the end of the line but it can't sense that so it just keeps trying until it's turned that extruder or that motor the number of steps you instructed it to that's how 3d printers work oddly enough that's how your inkjet and laser printer also work they print completely blind if you were to take a piece of plastic and stick it into your inkjet printer it will merrily try to print even though that ink is not going to stick to that paper but it has no way of knowing that that's also why you can print after running out of ink you know your printer can't actually sense when it runs out of ink there's a little chip inside the printer that estimates what you've told it to print and how much it thinks is in the cartridge it has no actual way of knowing you're out of ink most of them don't some of the more advanced ones have a sensor such as if you add a filament sensor okay even that doesn't tell it anything all it knows is trip this switch stop or trip the switch make a noise all right it's not actually feedback it's just another command basically this little switch thing you're adding is going to inject a command to the printer the printer doesn't know it's out of filament it just knows it got a command to stop okay now simplify 3d has no way of knowing whether or not this is possible I want it to do this and this well it will try if I tell it to do this it'll try to do it and it will fail because it'll print this one just fine and then it's going to come over here and it's going to come back down and it's going to try to print this one and it's going to crash into this one <laughs> okay so it requires me the programmer of instructions to be intelligent enough to realize okay my print heads that big this won't work but this uh-uh x gantry that's going to crash into this one okay so i need to clear the print head and i need to clear the x gantry okay so there you go that'll work okay but that took my brain with my capacity to see hear and feel and see and calculate okay this and this will work because that'll clear the x gantry that'll clear the print head they won't conflict the two paths won't intersect okay now simplify 3d can't know the geometry of your printer and there is no practical way for Simplify 3D to have you tell Simplify 3D the geometry of your printer. I hope they can enable that. I would like to be able to program enough instructions into Simplify 3D to be able to tell it the absolute position of my nozzle and exactly how far my nozzle can move within a radius without these parts touching so that Simplify 3D can more efficiently help me place the objects on the print bed. But for now, that would require details I'm not even aware of how to get. Okay, So Simplify 3D certainly can't explain it, and it has no way of knowing. So you have to decide, can I place these two objects here? Okay, but what if I do want to do this? And I want to put six nose cones on this bed. Well, I can do that. There is a... If this is the print nozzle, okay... And this is the shroud surrounding the print nozzle. Well, I have that much vertical space. So I can print that many layers before I'll have a nozzle collision. So I have to actually come in here with a ruler and measure how far from the tip of my nozzle to the nearest obstruction that might collide. And now I can tell Simplify 3D, okay, do a sequential print. I can go, you know, four millimeters. So print four millimeters of this nose cone, and then print four millimeters of this nose cone. Then come back here and print four millimeters of this nose cone, and then come back here and print four millimeters in this cone. Back and forth, back and forth. So instead of four millimeters, that 0.2 millimeters would be four times five, 20 layers. So 20 layers, 20 layers. Then 20 more layers, and 20 more layers. Then 20 more layers, and 20 more layers. Okay, that's how Simplify 3D works. Now, I found a neat little trick, the one I was just showing you a second ago. If I move the parts far enough away and I print them in the correct 
order, I can actually print an entire object. As long as my G code never ever commands this hardware to move back into this occupied space. But that requires my intelligence and my ability to understand and see and feel and touch and measure, none of which this printer can do and none of which the software can do to understand that. Which is why when you do sequential print, it starts off with zero. Okay? And you have to tell it, you have to measure your printer and tell it how much it can go without colliding. And if you give it the wrong measurement, it'll try to do it anyway and it'll collide. Okay? That's how sequential prints work. Okay? So on my printer here, for example, this will be interesting. I can, I have more available space on the left of my nozzle than I do on the right. Because on the left, all I have is the heat block in the nozzle and then the carriage around the um, hot end. But on the right, I got the blower nozzle. Okay? How is it going to know that? There might be 20 different nozzles available for this thing. It, it's just not possible or practical for Simplify 3D to ever know any of this. You have to decide how you're going to lay it out, what you think your printer is capable of doing by measuring it, okay? And then you place your objects on the print bed, set your process order, and then tell it either... Now, the reason I, I just basically... This printer is capable of going to 300, so I just set my sequential for 300. This way I never accidentally stop part way up an object and go to another one. Now, if I were to ever place two objects close together, I would have to go back in there and change that to something lower, to whatever would not conflict, would not crash. So on this printer, um, my nozzle... Uh, this is going to be hard to measure. I have about... 22 millimeters on the left. And 32 millimeters on the right. So if I go from left to right, and not right to left, so when I go from a part here to a part here, this part must be at least 22 millimeters away from the first part or I will impact the part okay now um, if this second part is narrower than the first part I have another limitation I'm gonna hit my X gantry and that X gantry is roughly I want to say 34 millimeters off the deck all right so that creates another limitation so I need to make sure that my biggest part is here and I go down in size as I go across so that I don't have a conflict with my X gantry because if I do a 10 millimeter diameter part here and a 20 millimeter diameter part here then this X gantry is gonna break that first 10 millimeter part because it's gonna crash into it even though the head itself isn't gonna hit it the X gantry is gonna hit it you have to know all of this so when I set my parts up, I go from this side to this side, I can be 22 millimeters away. So I usually do 25 millimeters to give me a little buffer. And don't forget your skirt. If you have a skirt, you have to add that dimension into it. All right. Although you only usually only need a skirt for the first part. You usually don't have enough oozing going to your second part. You're usually okay. Unless it's tall, then you might need a second skirt because it might ooze while it's going up and down. Okay. Now for depth. It looks like, oh, it's all the way back there. I don't know. I'm not going to measure it. You get the idea, okay? So you have to know how close the nozzle can be between these two parts before you're going to have a piece of this printer, whether it be this carriage fan, whether it be the X gantry, whether it be the pulley wheel. You have to know what your minimum safe distance is and space your parts accordingly so that this hardware doesn't crash into the part that's already there because the printer can't see it. The printer has no way of going, uh-oh, I'm about to crash into that, I better not do it. It can't do it. You have to do that. So I hope that explains better sequential printing. It's a manual process. You have to do the brain work to figure out where to place things and how high you can go. Um, you know, like, uh, if I wanted to put six nose cones on this bed, I could not do a 100% sequential, okay? It would not work. But I could do these two together and do, you know, 20 layers, 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 20 layers. 
and then come over here and do my next two. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay? But I can't do 30. Because if I did 30 and then come over here, the gantry is going to crash into the first part. Okay? Now, I discovered on this printer, I can do three. If I do one here, one here, and one here, I can print these three without a conflict. I can print this one, come over here, come all the way down, print this one, come over here, come all the way down, print this one. Be careful, though. Make sure your printer doesn't home. <laughs> all right? If this comes down and your printer homes, it's going to crash right through all these. <laughs> Okay, so you you this is stuff that you have to be aware of because the printer is dumb deaf and blind It has no idea what is here. It could it could start extruding kool-aid and it would not know It's simply going to follow the extruder step commands you give it in your g-code There's no feedback in this system, which is why we get spaghetti prints because it can't know it has no way of knowing. There's no force gauge. There's no pressure gauge. There's no optical sensors. It has no way of knowing it's printing spaghetti. It has no way of knowing it's printing a nose cone. All it knows is it was given a command to make this kind of a motion while spinning that motor so fast, while heating that thing up so much, and that whole process just happens to result in what you and I call a nose cone. Put to the printer, it's just a string of numbers. Okay? I hope that explains it. I hope that makes it easier to understand.